Un síndrome rarísimo. Se quedan muy Okay, so uh, my last talk this morning will be on how to use OCT in our ophthalmology. And so um, we'll review some basic anatomy using OCT, recognize the patterns of ganglion gang cell complex loss associated with neuroophthalmic disease and disease, and review some of the diagnostic prognostic and management uses of OCT. So we have two different uh, modalities with OCT that we can use in evaluating patients with uh, neuroophthalmic complaints. We have the retinal nerve hyperlayer uh, analysis and the ganglion cell complex quantitative analysis. And so you can uh, two different scans and you can get uh, different information that can help you um, in evaluating these patients. So historically, we've used RNFL OCT, and you know this can be very helpful uh, to confirm that questionable pallor on exam, opti question optic nerve pallor, and you look and you, you can actually see RNFL loss in OCT. So that could be helpful as a disease marker for optic nerve disease. May identify previous injuries, such as a patient that maybe had a history of optic neuritis, and you can monitor for progression. Uh, and there's uh, um, some correlation to disease with the, the structural abnormalities there. However, there is some delay and uh, changes on the RNFL um, can take up to three to six months um, to be noted. And then we have the ganglion cell complex, which um, can show you the actual structures, the layers of the retina, and then quantitative by measuring um, the thickness of that complex by segmenting out with an algorithm. So let's uh, talk about a little bit of the um, use of ganglion cell complex uh, for diagnosis. So the GCC uh, changes can actually occur much earlier than the RNFL changes, as early as two to four weeks after injury. Um, but we can see loss without uh, associated visual field loss. Um, the GCC analysis is objective, unlike visual field testing. Um, and the patterns of the GCC loss can help distinguish uh, different types of optic neuropathy. So let's talk about AION, or anterior skin optic neuropathy, versus optic neuritis. And so in uh, a retrospective case control study, there were 44 patients with 50 eyes with optic neuritis versus NAION, and 44 h match controls. And OCT was done at presentation and four consecutive follow-up visits. And there was a significantly greater altitudinal hemispheric difference in GCC and NAION patients uh, versus optic neuritis patients. And um, the GCC thickness, thickness decreased in less than two weeks after the onset in both in animal versus optic neuritis. And so these patients may still have disc edema and RNFL swelling, but show a decrease in the uh, ganglion cell complex. And so if you look over time, um, at, at, at one week, three weeks, 10 weeks, and six months, you can see some progression of the ganglion cell complex loss in this typical pattern of AION, which is altitudinal, versus optic neuritis, which doesn't really show much pattern at all. The progression and severity of ganglion cell loss and RNFL loss didn't differ significantly between AION and optic neuritis, though. So the, the key point is the ganglion cell complex pattern generally respects the horizontal meridian as the visual field does in AION. This altitudinal pattern uh, can appear within two weeks of onset of the vision loss, but the, the, this, the changes may be seen even in asymptomatic eyes. And in optic neuritis, the ganglion cell complex pattern is somewhat irregular and does not respect the horizontal meridians, just like the visual field can have really any pattern with optic neuritis. Um, the, the ganglion cell complex changes appear to develop later in optic neuritis, especially with retrolobar optic neuritis. And again, these changes may be seen in asymptomatic eyes. So the, the key um, take home point here is this altitudinal um, uh, meridian that's respected in, in AION versus optic neuritis, especially if you see a patient after the original um, event and you're trying to figure out, going back to what could have happened, looking at the GCC can be helpful for this. 
So let's talk about uh, the use of this with compressive optic neuropathy. So there is a retrospective case control study of 23 patients with chiasmal compression versus uh, H-matched controls. In visual field and OCT for the GCC were obtained. And in all patients, the ganglion cell complex loss corresponded to the vertical field defects. So you can see this one is, is more consistent with like a junctional scotoma with temporal loss in one eye, um, more severe loss in the other, and um, the GCC really matches nicely with that. Interestingly, uh, patients with no or minimal visual field loss can still have some evidence of compression if you look at the GCC. So they can have the same pattern um, with uh, temporal loss, but without associated visual field defects. And so here's an example of a patient with um, pretty minimal visual field loss um, in the normal uh, RNFL OCT, but you can see some early ganglion cell complex loss. And has this uh, evidence of a uh, chiasmal compression. Additionally, um, post-resection visual field can improve with persistent thinning on the ganglion cell complex. So I think adding this to the RNFL can be helpful in patients that you're concerned about compression of the chiasm, especially if they have a normal field um, to try to potentially intervene prior to the onset of visual field loss. What about in retrochiasmal lesions? And so the ganglion cell complex can actually match in retrochiasmal lesions as well. Um, someone that has a homonymous hemianopia. Um, here's someone with a, um, um, a quadrantinopia, and you can see uh, associated uh, ganglion cell complex loss. And so for compressive optic neuropathy, um, Key points are that the ganglion cell complex changes may precede visual field loss and remain after recovery of visual field post-treatment. But I think this, this um, is an opportunity to intervene prior to the onset of visual field loss. Chiasmal and even retrochiasmal compressive optic neuropathy um, almost always exhibit a vertical pattern of ganglion cell loss similar to the visual fields. Okay, so what about for papilledema? So, um, as we know, optic disc edema occurs from increased intracranial pressure. It's usually bilateral from blockage of axoplasmic flow. Uh, but the, the RNFL OCT can be challenging to monitor in patients, especially with uh, severe papilledema. So in this study, uh, 18 patients with papilledema from IIH and healthy controls were followed. And, um, over time, and the visual field OCT for GCC and RNFL were obtained. And the GCC loss uh, during follow-up correlated with the visual field uh, increase, the MD increase, but patients with severe papilledema or uh, 200 on the global thickness were less predictive due to algorithm failure from RNFL swimming, uh, swelling going into the mouth. So ganglion cell loss, uh, ganglion cell complex loss and papilledema occurs along with RNFL swelling. So you can see some damage even in the setting of the swelling and, and that can be uh, challenging for patients that have uh, persistent swelling to know um, how you're treating it appropriately. So even with the swelling, you start seeing some progressive uh, thinning of the ganglion cell complex. So the ganglion cell complex changes uh, do not appear as reliable monitoring uh, progression of optic neuropathy. Um, visual fields, despite their subjectivity, are really the mainstay in terms of evaluating for vision loss. Um, the RNFL analysis can be complicated by increased edema, um, making it hard to segment. Um, and it's going to stay swollen for an extended period of time. It just takes some time for the swelling to go down. But you may see changes on the GCC complex. So in summary, um, in terms of how we use OCT, the RNFL can really help confirm the presence of disc power and aid in identification of previous optic neuropathy.
lymphopathy or compressive lesion. Altitudinal family cell complex loss helps distinguish AI away from optic meridus. Loss of the ganglion cell complex respecting the vertical meridian can be seen in chiasmal compression, even with minimal visual field loss. The GCC can actually confirm the normal loss of the retrochiasmal lesions. For IAH, it's um, more objective to follow papilledema with the RNFL, and, but the ganglion cell loss um, is also less predictive of visual field loss of papilledema. But I think both of those together can help um, follow these patients with IAH.